Good evening and welcome to Takeover AU, Takeover Television, Takeover TV, call it what you like. Tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, the morning, whenever you happen to be watching, this is the Takeover Footy Wrap, where we look into the footy and the AFL, what's been happening in the last week or two, what's going to be happening, there's plenty on. And in case you haven't guessed, we are broadcasting from the great state of infection known as Victoria. I'm Sergio Paradise, and I'm joined by three of the great cult figures of AFL and AFL broadcasting. Firstly, legendary podcaster, broadcaster, and mad saints man. It's, of course, Mark Finey Fine. Oh, that's better, Serge. Yeah. And Collingwood legend, the incredible Hulk, Rene King. Great to be back, Steve. Thank you. And, of course, Hawthorne hard man. That's how we have to uh, always introduce him is the great Campbell Brown. And as I say, they're all cult figures. In fact, you could all, almost describe them as a pack of cults. And we're here, <laughs> we're here to discuss the footy. What's been going on? What's taken your mind the last couple of days, gentlemen? I'm glad you said cults and, yeah. and not another word. How are you, everyone? Very well, Brownie. Yeah, we're, um, yeah we live in a strange place, don't we? It's strange... very strange because out your window it's night time, Brownie, and out... Serge's window, it's daytime. <laughs> well, I've got a terrible feeling that Melbourne is sort of um, orbiting in a different plane to the rest of the world. I think so. We've I been jettisoned. So. Yeah. Now, now we're, we're now we've just I think we've just started uh, the Melbourne Port Adelaide game, which is uh, the the second game of thirty three matches in twenty days. Before we get onto those and what's going to happen and what is not going to happen, and we don't quite know. Let's just go back on a few of the games from uh, the last round. What about you, Rena? You you cast a pretty, you know. Well, let's let's jump on the first the first game, Steve. Of course, Collingwood Eagles. Um, very disappointing from my point of view. The the, yeah. the, uh, the Collingwood side started off twenty points up, looking very very sharp, and uh, next minute for some reason um, they just uh, stood back and and watched uh, the Eagles, especially their midfielders, take control. Uh, a big loss with uh, Pendlebury out. Right away, uh, right from the start, that was that was a, a real loss to Collingwood because he's a leader and, and he also shapes the side through the middle. And uh, of course, um, uh, with, with uh, the ruck, uh, Natanui, he was just fantastic. The other guy as well, uh, their other ruckman, and uh, they absolutely Oscar gave him a, gave uh, <laughs> Grundy a, a hammering. So it was a really bad night for Collingwood. There's been, it seems to be a few of those games lately. It was a bit like Richmond and the Bulldogs last night. That Teams will have a, a, a great week, like the Bulldogs did the last week before, and then they come up and they really struggle. Like Collingwood have been playing pretty well. But as you say, they got, they got pumped by the Eagles the other night. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, it's a very interesting season. We don't have to talk about how interesting it is. And, uh, and of course, Port Melbourne, uh, Port Adelaide and St Kilda, uh, once again, it was an interesting game until the last quarter. It could have gone either way. So uh, all, all the games so far this year are very telling as to who's going to win the games, particularly getting into the second part of the the uh, season now. I'll, I'll tell you something about Collingwood. It's a simple mathematical formula. Collingwood minus Howell minus Degoe minus Pendlebury. Pretty ordinary conveyance. But side bottom? They would, and side bottom as well, of course. So so would any other team be. You know, I'm, you're talking about their... Certainly that mid-size forward, whether it's Degoe, whether it's Toby Green, whether it's uh, Dustin Martin going forward at, at Richmond, that is the power forward of, two, of 2020. So to lose Degoe, to lose Pendlebury on top of Howell and side bottom, well, extenuating circumstances and playing, you know, a, a real premiership contender, if not favourite, on their home patch. Uh, they blew out in the finish, maybe. Almost predictable. Yeah, what I loved about the Eagles, all, all their key midfielders and uh, key, key uh, on ballers from last year, the year before, really, really have stood up and uh, they're going to be a real power to beat. Yeah, yeah, with the draw. How about, did you watch the uh, St Kilda Port game, guys? Ray Campbell, yeah. did you see in the first quarter Dan Butler grab the ball near the boundary and he tried that? sort of Dacos kick around the corner mm-hmm. and it yeah. skidded because it was a bit dewy and it just yep. hit the inside of the post. Yeah. 
that was the only point St Kilda scored for the entire game. Yeah, so, now they were efficient, weren't they? Um, they were sensational. They're just building something very nice there, the, the Saners, and um, that was a big scalp, you know, Port Adelaide at, at Adelaide Oval, and it can give them plenty of, uh, a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. But the, do- the doggies last night, I don't reckon they've actually beaten anyone. They, they beat up on the Sydney Swans. They beat, um, you know, Essendon. I think they towed up North Melbourne and Bruce kicked six. He hasn't had a, a, a kick uh, since. Um, so it was a good test for them last night as well, and uh, they were found wanting against a, a depleted Richmond side. So it's a, a bit of a funny season, but I think form now is just starting to take shape a little bit now that we're uh, a fair few rounds in. Yeah, I reckon. West I reckon. Case, Richmond and Brisbane. Yep. The, yep. the Tigers were a bit scary last night. It was bad. Nice to see Dusty. How, how good was he when he, he's back in form? He's absolutely a, he's a freak of nature, is he not? Yeah, two of his three goals were just magnificent, weren't yeah. they? So, And they've got a lot of good good young kids that have been, um, you know, we probably haven't seen a lot of, but Noah Bolter and Egmolesi Smith and Shea Bolton and all these guys, they've been just doing their apprenticeship at uh, VFL level for a couple of years and, um, when they get the opportunity, they just slot straight in and um, and still play. They, they probably play a more exciting brand than some of the, the Richmond senior players because they're uh, they've got a bit more leg speed. Yeah, well, see Dustin Martin last night. I think he's now almost at Isaac Rankin standard the way he played last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they get excited pretty quickly now in footy, don't they? Oh, we I, do. Now, something happened in last night's game. It didn't matter. Of course, the final result was never in doubt. But there was, just after half time. I guess if the Doggies were going to mount a challenge, they, were, they played some decent footy in the first five to ten minutes after half time. And there's a rule in football that I think is ridiculous. And it absolutely bit them on the backside, as I said, doesn't affect the result. Now, Wallace takes a mark, and he's got a knock above the eye. Yeah. He's going back to have a kick. And by the rules of the game, nobody's allowed within 15 metres of him. So the trickle of blood above his eye should not – he should be allowed to have that kick. He had to go off, and Billy Gowers, who had not had a single kick for the night, took the kick, sprayed it, and Wallace, who kicked three goals, it's fair to say he probably would have put that through – and it would have been back-to-back goals for the doggies and something to build on. Now, it doesn't affect the result because they get pantsed, but I don't like that rule. What do you reckon, Campbell, Renee, and Serge? It's a good point you make. Yeah, he's turned himself into a really dangerous uh, mid-sized forward, hasn't he? Almost resurrected his career, Mitch Wallace, and um, yeah. he's, he's, he must have worked hard on his goal-kicking because uh, he really makes the most of his opportunities. And, and you're right, um, if they were ever to... To mount a challenge, it was on on the back of uh, just getting a bit of momentum there, and um, I think that the umpire should have allowed him just to wipe the eye, go back, take the shot, and then go off. So uh, when Gow was sprayed it to the right, that was the end of him, wasn't it? I couldn't agree more. Finally, with the, the we were, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago in, in a similar situation. I remember the blood rule came in back back when when AIDS was like a worldwide health problem and nobody wanted the transfer of blood be accidental or deliberate in any situation could have, 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 have put the HIV virus across. Now that's not a real issue. Now the blood rule now I think is purely an aesthetic rule because it, it's not a good look uh, for, for, for kids and families to see players with blood everywhere. Okay, but it, do, it does attract vampires to the game, which is... Well, well, if Renee, you used to love a bit of claret, didn't you, mate? Hammer up. I, I created a bit of uh, claret, <laughs> uh, Campbell. It's, I, I never wore any of it myself, personally. But uh, oh, listen uh, to this too. We Twenty-three occasions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did cause a little bit of that, but uh, it's a little bit of a perplexing sort of uh, issue. The, the blood rule, and and, and finally, he's right in a situation like that, uh, it possibly shouldn't have happened. So. Uh, but we're fighting that with a lot of rules, particularly the one I'm really grinding at the moment about is this uh, so-called uh, 
over the boundary line deliberately. Yeah. And, and we're all seeing it when these players in these slippery conditions up there in Queensland, particularly with this light rain, Perth and everywhere, when a player is trying his hardest to get the ball moving forward, and that's what we want, get the ball out of the packs. And uh, the umpire is calling all these, um, uh, you know, deliberate calls over the boundary line. And, and it's just making me really wild because it's not the case. They're defenders. They're working hard. Middle middle players are working hard and, and um, stupid party penalty because it's deliberate. Well, you know, honestly. I don't know how many times over the last month or so I've yelled at the TV screen, that umpire does not understand how the game is actually played. Because, Correct. Because, Correct. I mean, sometimes it's, it's just a shank or it's a, a slippery ball off the side of the boot or it's a handball that's come off the wrong part of the hand. It wasn't it's ridiculous. It was just a, a poor, an accidentally poor disposal. Which yeah. Was, yeah. You know, in the St Kilda Adelaide game, at the start of the game, Dan Butler got the ball on the wing yeah. and he fell over as he tried to kick it. <laughs> and he tripped over his own feet and the ball ricocheted off one of his knees as he was falling over. The umpire paid intentional. I mean, they, you they've think got that to was have a deliberate some, move. Yeah. They, they've got to have some. First of all, I just want to go through the rule. It's the normally when an umpire pays a free kick, right? He stands there, plants his legs, blows the whistle, and indicates which way the free kick is, and will indicate what sort of free it is: holding the ball, holding the man, something like that. For some reason, this intentional out of bounds, the umpire runs to the scene of the crime. And along the way, pretends to run somebody out under arm. <laughs> it's a very interesting dynamic. I think he's running because it, it's actually the one decision the crowd, above all other decisions, the crowd makes. Yeah. They yell for it. And half the crowd half the crowd yells intentional and the other half uh, yells deliberate. And they're not – it's deliberate the opposition. What's being said. But, but but it's hilarious the way they run in with that that underarm. Yeah, it's like it's a sweep. Only, it's like a right. It's the only free sweep. kick they run towards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think uh, just jumping here, the other thing that's a real issue is um, as we look at the um, the game with uh, Melbourne, uh, we took the mark in the goal square. What's what's his name? Um, or the Melbourne, Melbourne player. Brisbane game. Like, yeah. Oh, Jake Lever. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He took it. That off, was very on, controversial. On, on the, the line of the point post. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we've got a real issue at the moment with, with these, what they call close, close calls or close decisions uh, with the ball coming through the goals. And time after time after time, we can see quite clearly, as I see it, an ex-player, that it's either a goal or it's touched or it's marked on the line. But they go to this big hullabaloo and the umpire comes running in, talks to the goal umpire, then calls the big square and up it goes to the to the broadcast and and uh, back and forth, back and forth. And some of the decisions, as we know, guys, are just terrible. Yeah. And it's time-wasting too. Yeah. There was one good one on, on last round, though. Is, is it possible to get goal of the year when you don't know you've actually kicked it at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Embry. Memory? It was, it was a Tim oh, Embry, yeah. yeah. Magnificent yeah. goal, wasn't it? Or the from, karate from, kick. From just about every angle that was broadcast until they went to that slow-mo close-up. Yeah. I thought, you, you, you cannot pick that. And that's pro- surely is going to have to be a point. And then you saw the slow-mo and thought, I'll tell you what, that, that just about is the goal of the year. <laughs> and, and he didn't even know it himself. The luck's of fortune, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. you know, yeah, said, it will come. It'll, it'll come when you get a final, and this sort of thing happens in a final, particularly a grand final. Oh my God, there's going to be some trouble, you know, because uh, if that decision is wrong, oh geez. Oh, exactly. I mean, and, and for for the sake of the umpire, uh, the AFL going out and buying a bunch of high definition GoPros and sticking them all over the goal the goalpost, which in a grand final, it's one game. It's eight posts. Let's say sixteen GoPros. Yeah, you know? it's, it's, it's not. They spend spend more on Brian Adams coming out here than they will on <laughs> on, on, on making sure that the, the game's 
officiated correctly. Yeah. We talk about the umpires and uh, Clarkson's had a bit of a go. I mean, you can see as we look over all those things I've just discussed, uh, and the other one at the moment too is which I, it stands out and they, and they showed it, which was Carlton, North Melbourne and Cripps being handled, yeah. and mishandled and manhandled uh, time and time again and no free kick being paid. Uh, and I, I think he's a, a Brownlow medalist eventually if he gets a chance. But uh, uh, I just find that very frustrating that uh, he's doing everything right to, to attack the ball and get the ball and he's just being grabbed in every possible position and held back. And the umpires aren't seeing it or aren't paying it. Right. Oh, they've played that tune yeah. before Carlton, haven't they? What's that? <laughs> they did it with Judd as well. Oh, they grab and they go. Sort it out on the field, mate. There's three umpires. You've got your own physical wherewithal and you've got teammates. If you yeah, think well, you're still player, got away with it if you think the you're first to play to get tagged and scragged, you fair think can live in a vacuum. And I'm not blaming Cripps. I'm blaming people around him. You know, let the let the kid sort it out, let the umpire sort it out. But fair dinkum, he ain't the first and he's not going to be the last. No, he's not. But but uh, it's just making the game ugly uh, by 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 allowing not allowing a, a quality player do his thing. As far as I'm concerned, well, he's got to sort it out. He's got to work it out. I well, mean, every other good player works it out. They work it out. He'll work it out. He's a good player. Yeah. He's a good player. And the umpires are there. They they got to keep an eye on it as well. And there's that many of them now. Now, yeah. gentlemen, just to get away from some of the games. What do you make of uh, the news out of Queensland today about three of the clubs maybe copping a reasonable fine because nothing that any of the players or officials have done but their families have done off the field? What do you make of all that sort of stuff? Well, one, one was uh, the grandparents grabbed one of the kids and took it to uh, one of Dream the theme World. parks yeah. and then brought it back to, to whoever the player was and his yeah. wife and... Uh, and of course, being in the theme park, you, you just never know how that kid or kids, yeah. whoever they were, yeah. could have caught a corona and next to there's big trouble. So I, I can see the uh, the AFL's reasoning for it. Yeah, or it could have been yeah. worse. They could have taken the kids on the, the log ride, but they didn't do that. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> quite lovely, too. A pretty, I mean, a pretty, pretty draconian penalty being handed down by the AFL. I mean, I've got to say, they've, they've come down very heavy handed. Have they announced the penalties yet, Finding? Yeah, I, I, yeah, that I kid's not allowed. No, no, that kid's not allowed to go to SeaWorld till he's 21. <laughs> the girlfriend's not allowed to go to a beauty salon. Um, five years, any beauty salon. She can get her nails done, but no waxing whatsoever. <laughs> and the North Melbourne wives, have you heard their penalty? No. They've, they've been they've, they're now forced to go to every game for the rest of the season. <laughs> Why is this hate? Hey, 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 on every hey. level. <laughs> what about Rebecca Judge? She was she was in the news today. Look, I, I, look, I think I think all news should be filtered through Rebecca Judge. I don't know what you blokes think, but she was pretty upset today that, that there is a loophole in the coronavirus rules that states that if uh, you do test positive you are allowed to leave the house to exercise. She wasn't too happy about that today. And and I rarely say this, but uh, she might have a bit of a point. Yeah, well, if you're exercising, you're breathing out more, you're, you're coughing, and yeah. uh, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be uh, overly wrapped if um, if someone ran past me with coronavirus. Yeah, well, apparently, the, according to the Victorian constitutional rights, which I didn't know Victoria actually had a constitution, but apparently that we do, um, that you, you cannot keep people in their house uh, because it becomes like a prison, right? So even if you do test positive to the virus, you are allowed to go outside to exercise. And Rebecca wasn't too happy about that today. So Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think Rebecca's saying is correct, but I would not be taking any COVID advice from somebody that thinks that Botox is an essential service. <laughs> <laughs> All coming off for a long run tonight. What about some of the games coming up this weekend, gentlemen? I just want to talk about Clarko. Yes. You know Clarko well, Campbell. Yep. You know the Clarkos of this world, Rene. Yes, certainly do. And you were not at the Battle of London, but I know that you're a big fan of Ian Aitken's surge, so you'll yeah. be interested in this. Um, now, 
He's he's no he's no fool, as you know. He this is a man who went away, looked at football, redesigned it, and won four premierships. And he is now on a weekly basis saying something stupid. And I reckon it's not accidental. You know, he, after the Sydney games, he has a go at Tom Papley. That's not Clarko like. What he said today was ridiculous. Oh, we were three and one before we went into the hub. Now we're three and now we're three and five. Yeah. You, you work it out. Have done you work it out. The hub's no good for us. Yeah. I mean, he, he knows that sounds stupid. And I reckon here's a bloke who's contracted till twenty twenty two. Um it, it, there's no reason he shouldn't be there next year other than a mutual agreement between the club and himself. Forget, take Kennet out of it, but he, his currency is greater now. Y- your currency is greater when there's still a year to run on your contract. Yep. If GWS were not to make the top four this year and the word filtered to the AFL that Clarko was available, he might get one big lucrative contract and that may not be the case next year. I, I just think the way he's talking, I reckon he wants out. He's a clever bloke, Clarko, and this is madness, some of the stuff he's – what he said today is just, you know. He is a master of, of, of deferral too and because he, he, he tends to – I well, I I'm just assuming this, that he, he tends to know that if he says something a little bit outrageous, if he bags – Tom Papley, who's just carved up his entire back line for the, for the entire match. If he bags Tom Papley, that's going to be the story, not the fact that his back, none of his backmen could keep up with him, you know, and he defers it beautifully like that. But I Campbell, think, what, do you, what do you reckon? Knowing the bloke, could this be an exit strategy? No, definitely not. Uh, it'd be just a deflection strategy. Um, they've got some issues. Their, their ball movement's slow. Uh, obviously, it's the oldest list in the competition, and um, and he probably knows there's a few issues there, um, and their performance is poor. So, now nah, I, I don't. I think he'll see his contract out for sure. Whether he renews at Hawthorne or not is another thing. But um, if a side was looking for a senior coach, um, you know, he'd obviously be, be one of the first in oh, the yeah. line. And I, I reckon he could do a great job with the Melbourne list. Yeah, the 17 other clubs would have him in a heartbeat. I'd have well, him at Melbourne. Um, he'd be unbelievable at Melbourne, I reckon. Yeah. Um, with you know, a being, talented list. Yeah, yeah you with know, a you know with a um, yeah. former Melbourne man. But, uh, yeah, I, he doesn't usually make excuses. So what he said today was a little bit unusual, finally. But um, he, he's got to, he will certainly put a few senior blokes on notice this week, I reckon. And, I mean, Hawthorne, this is a club that we know, well, in my lifetime, there's been none better on and off field. You've got Don Scott saying that that salary cap stuff, you know, every week Hawthorne people and just anybody must be sitting in trepidation as what's going to come off that podcast. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> That podcast it's, caused more trouble than good, hasn't it? It's um, it's unhawthorn like I'll say that much. Yeah, from my point of view, from a player, I find it very, very strange that Don Scott would come out and say something like that. Uh, is it to be controversial, or, or has he got a gripe to bear? Yeah, well, he, he doesn't yeah, get on that well no. with with Kennett and uh, and the board there. I know that. So, um, I don't. Maybe he just got caught up. You, you hear it, hear it a lot, people on podcasts saying things that they would never say usually to free-to-air, you know, television or an interview or something. But when you're sitting there with a couple of mates and you've got Sam and, you know, Mike and you're probably in a relaxed environment, you might go down a path that you you usually wouldn't uh, and, and not understand them. I'm sure he understands the ramifications of it, but shit, it's hard to prove and it's, it's almost why would you go down that path? True, I know. Yeah, now, true. now, gentlemen, just to uh, wind this thing up a little, let's have a look at some of the games coming up over uh, this coming weekend. We've got we've got a bunch more tomorrow. Carlton Hawthorne. You'd have to think if Carlton even think they're even close to being the real deal, they have to take care of Hawthorne tomorrow. 
Yeah, I'm looking at Carlton as a, as a side on the up because their young players are playing well and uh, they're just playing a nice style of football which, uh, which suits. So uh, I believe they'll be a little bit too quick for Hawthorne. Much better yeah, team Hawthorne this week. Uh, yeah, they've got Bruce back, O'Brien back, Segler. The unusual career of Keegan Brooksby is on hold again. <laughs> Essendon, Brisbane. What do we make of this one, boys? I think Brisbane will smash them. Um, yeah. Essendon only just fell across the line against Adelaide, who uh, haven't won a game this year. And you could argue that if they'd have kicked straight, they uh, they would have knocked them off. So I feel like um, I feel like Essendon uh, are very ripe for uh, for the pickings this week, and I think they'll get uh, they'll get beaten convincingly. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy because I live with uh, Craig Stewart and his son James has got his first game for the year. So he's six foot five and um, he's nice and fit, ready to go because he had osteopubis alongside uh, Danaher, but he, he, he sort of come good first. I think Danaher's still struggling from what I believe. So I'm looking forward to him uh, being another big tall and I believe they've needed tours on, the, on their forward line incident uh, because they look to me... Uh, very small side over the last uh, five, six weeks in particular. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the, uh, to the game in particular, but uh, Brisbane are yeah, terrific the way they've been coached. Right. Now, there's 33 yeah. games in 20 days. If there's one yeah. of those that you want to miss... It's going yeah, to just, on, just on Essendon, right. Brisbane. Just yeah. Essendon, Malavai, Washington. Malavai, Washington, there's a name. Yeah. You remember him? No. He made a he made a Wimbledon final. I was just about to say U.S. Open final. No Wimbledon. Wimbledon yeah. final. Yeah. He, he could he could fair dinkum. He wasn't good enough to hit. He wasn't good enough to hit up with the ball boys normally. <laughs> but he just you know occasionally you get a run and you just play certain plays at the right time and all the seeds you know and he got all the way through. Now Essendon's five and what, what they got five wins do they out of seven? Yeah, I think so. Five. Yeah, five they're not two. worth. Because of injuries, they're not worth pigs on shit. I mean, you wouldn't <laughs> tip them in a month of Sundays. True. <laughs> we'll ignore North and Adelaide and move on to St Kilda, Sydney. Fine. <laughs> Poor North and Adelaide. Oh, it's that Magic Door. That's a good story. Oh, it's a good story. Good to see him back. Yeah. Your, your Saints surely would have to take care of Sydney too, Fine. Yeah, they look a little bit hamstrung. They've been forced out of Sydney, which is. It's interesting. It's the Pride game being played on the Gold Coast. I don't know what the bikers will make of that. Are they going to? Are they going to support the the annual Pride game? It makes more sense down at, in Sydney or near St Kilda in Melbourne. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if the um, Banditos are going to support the Pride game, but I think so. Think so. Oh, the Banditos might sell a bit of gear at the Pride game. You never know. <laughs> I'm going against you, Finey. I, I like Sydney because the last couple of weeks, Sydney have taken the game on and just uh, up and ramped it up a little bit and uh, had a bit more of a go and uh, using the ball a lot better, running a lot quicker. Uh, so uh, no, I like no, Sydney. Right, all four at home, that's better than beating the top team away. <laughs> well, it's a win anyway. West yeah, Coast, you're long, gentlemen. West Coast are uh, the better of the round. Yeah, you'd think so. You I would think, think so. Did you yeah, like Selwood's still not back? You know. Nah, um, it was good that Hawkins got off. That was important for him. But I think the bookies put up a line of 16 and a half points. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's changed now. But um, I'm expecting the Eagles to, to win that game pretty comfortably. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, Brownie. Did you, did you ever appeal any of your reports, Campbell? I couldn't, no, because the medical reports were, were the sticking point with me. I could say it that I didn't make contact to the head, but when all the medical reports said that he had delayed onset of concussion and memory loss and bloody stiff neck and all these sort of things, you don't have a lot of, of room to move on a legal your, front, finding. Your decisions generally got the old the crowns appealing against the leniency of the sentence. <laughs> I'll give you two, two words for most of yours, Brownie. Blood rule. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sunday, Gold Coast versus GWS. 
Should could be actually a pretty good game. This I reckon. No, I've got to pick VWS. You know yeah. that that form. That's a good win against Richmond if you yeah. measure it up now. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. still still a bit inconsistent this year. The Giants. No, I think, think you find if Toby Green plays, they go right. Yeah, very true. And the final game of the round, Frio Collingwood. Um, I'll jump in here because. Uh, it's it's over there at Fremantle, of course, and um, you know look, they'll be very hard to beat because they're not far off it. They, they've won a couple, haven't they? And uh, yeah. and we we need to really, uh, if we're going to be in the top three or four or five going towards the end of the season, we really need to win this. So uh, uh, and and uh, Rundy really has to pick his game up too. He really does. So uh, yeah, I, I like us against the Dockers. Yeah. Uh. They just struggle oh, to score, don't they? If Tabin is not marking and kicking goals, they don't have too many other avenues finding no. uh, Fremantle. And I mean, it showed in well, the wet. When Walter's out, he looks like he's not playing. And yeah, yeah, I, you know, gee, after Fredericks missed those two shots at goal before half time, I thought they're, gonna, they're not going to get one, but they yeah. did get a couple. Um, you know, I was thinking, Renee, when you played, you you finished your career with a. a handful of games at St Kilda a season or two at Essendon. But yep. I reckon, had you played in the AFL era, you definitely would have been one of those blokes like Campbell. You would have gone to the Gold Coast, and I reckon you would have ended up at Fremantle. And I would have loved to have seen you in the purple. <laughs> you, you would have looked like a family block of Cadbury chocolate. Well, look, uh, Kink got married in pink, so, you know, I, I could have changed and gone to purple, so... No problem, guys. Renee, Renee with the big, with the big anchor, the big purple, you know, uh, purple people are coming off the halfback flank. Uh, I was running around with an anchor on me back at the end of my career. <laughs> 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 you better believe it. All right, Especially gentlemen. your best, your best mate, Steve Kevin Sheedy. Now, gentlemen, thanks for that uh, this week for the takeover footy wrap. I think we've uh, we've had a look at most of these things that's been going on. And uh, uh, it's we'll... for forty-five minutes, and Melbourne haven't kicked the goal. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for that, Finey. Okay, so uh, so uh, we'll get back to you. We'll see you next week and see what's happening in this magnificent uh, festival of football that's going on for the next three weeks. See you, lads. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Good on you. Uh, great to see you.